building the uh, America West Arena at the time, and I was uh, concentrating on programming, you know, filling dates. And uh, we were looking at all the various options, and I had seen some uh, arena football on TV late, late at night, you know, on some of the old channels. And I was intrigued by it. It seemed so exciting. There was a lot of energy in the building, etc. Coincidentally, then I was approached by the management of the league at the time uh, and the commissioner. He invited, uh, invited me to the Arena Bowl in Detroit. So Brian Colangelo, my son, we both went to Detroit and saw the championship game. And we saw the, the, uh, the impact it had on the fans and how they reacted to, to the game and the, the activities. Afterwards, we met with a um, couple of different owners in the Arena Football League and the commissioner and basically made a deal you know, for, for the team. They had a very high number in mind for the franchise and I didn't necessarily agree with the number, but we did agree on a number. And so that's how it became a, a reality. First of all, we always knew and felt that football was a, a big sport here in Arizona. And so we, we anticipated there would be a, a good response. We didn't know how good a response because it was going to take place during the off season, if, if you will. So the timing of the schedule was still to be, you know, a question mark until we went through it. We hired Danny White, who was a big time favorite here in the, in the community, and we were in the league. And the results were tremendous. We had a great fan participation. Uh, you know, in my mind, I think we sold out most all our games in that first year. And uh, it was an exciting place to be. There was a cult following for arena football. Kurt Warner, by way of example, was playing in the league, I think even in that first year or soon thereafter. But a number of individuals who also played in the NFL and some who were just shy of being NFL players, it was a great opportunity for them to continue with their football. So we won, you know, a couple of championships pretty quick. They were exciting times. I remember winning our first championship in Orlando and the celebration we had in Orlando, uh, just our team and the, it was a great moment, you know, to be, be a champion. And then we came back a couple of years later and won again here in Phoenix in front of our fans. And, you know, it was a great experience. I think we established something for the franchise, which continued. There's an appetite for the game because of the nature of the game, the excitement of the game. And uh, so yeah, I'm glad we did it. I'm glad we brought it in. We were the first uh, team to win a championship, you know, in terms of uh, our professional sports teams here in the, in the community. and. Um, it was, a, it was a great memory and a great, uh, a great thing to think back on. And it was pretty evident just by the response of the fans, they loved it, they enjoyed it, and it was really exciting. Sure glad we did, made that decision when we did. There was uh, a lot of color, you know, we had great colors, I thought, you know, in terms of our uniforms and music and thing. I mean, he became like a, a folk hero. The whole atmosphere was, was uh, up, upbeat. You know, the game itself was so um, dynamic. I mean, the scoring that took place and how quickly um, you had a chance to come back if you were down big time. So it was a, a unique twist on the game itself. You have to give credit to people who think outside the box. And so for the inventors of the game, of arena football, you know, they, they were way ahead of their time. I think we gave our fans options and so not everyone is a basketball fan or a football fan but by giving them a, a menu of events and things to follow you're going to touch a lot of people but arena football had a built-in following i think some other people were watching late night arena football on cable tv like me so there was some anticipation uh, about the the arrival of the team and the birth of the team. And I mean, it was evident from day one, the crowds that we, we drew. 
and they, they, they were hooked. Once they, they were in the building, they loved it. Communities have to feel that you're committed to the community, that you're going to put a good product on the field, on the court, and that they trust you that you're going to, you're out there to win, and you want to do things to make them proud. So you build an organization that is really wired into the community and follow through on your commitments to the community, put a great product on, on as I said, on the court field or whatever, and, um, and win. You know, it really helps to win uh, because you could do a lot of things and if you, you fall short, you know, there's psychology about, uh, uh, many books have been written about why do fans jump on the bandwagon when things are good and why do they jump off the bandwagon when things are bad? Well, honestly, candidly, life is, could be pretty difficult for, for, many, for many people. So when they have an opportunity, they want to identify with the winner. You know, because I've heard directly from people, look, I don't want to bother with that. I have enough problems in my life. I don't want to be supportive of a loser. Give them a winner and that changes everything. So I really believe that some of what we produced and offered to our community here with the various sports teams served as outlets for, for people. They, they identified with it. They were proud of the teams when they, when they won. Obviously, you could have a successful franchise in a, a league that's struggling. And obviously, the, the ori original Arena Football League went through um, some periods of time where it was challenging. And it morphed into a different league. It morphed into still arena football, but it was on a different kind of a plane or level. And I would give great credit to uh, the people who came in and bought the team and um, made it a winner for sure. It, they've carried on with the tradition of the franchise going back to the birth of the franchise. Uh, I think they've done a great job. But I've been here for a long time. Uh, when, I, when I got here in the late 60s out of, from Chicago, there were 700,000 people in the valley. Today there's five million people in the valley. Uh, on one of my first press conferences, I made the following statement. This community owes us nothing. We have to earn the respect and support of the community by how we conduct ourselves on the court, off the court, participating in the community, how can we make it a better place in which to live? I think the Rattlers have always participated on that level. They have, they took that commitment and they ran with it from day one. And so as the market continues to grow, there's more opportunity to attract people to your product. And yes, it's a competitive marketplace, no question. You know, I was committed to bringing all four major sports to Arizona. I wanted this to be a major league city, and we got there as one of only 11 cities at one time in football, basketball, hockey, baseball. And so there's more than enough to pull from. If everyone does their job in this competitive environment, I think you could build a very solid base Season ticket base is really important. Television exposure is really important. Being involved in the community as a good citizen is very important. And uh, affordable pricing. I think the future bodes well for, for this franchise because they've done things the right way for a long time. Be proud of what the past has done in terms of, of how the franchise has performed in the past. Be supportive of uh, what they're doing in the present, and let's feel comfortable and confident that the league will continue to improve, get stronger, get better, and uh, enjoy the moment.